Hey guys, it's JJ. Welcome back to the Eagles franchise. Today we're gonna go through the draft class for the first time. And yeah, because we have the bye week and the bye week is always the one week where I look at the draft more in depth and show you a few players that I would wanna target maybe or that just generally are interesting for the next draft class because this rebuild is far from over. And yeah, uh, first off, I want to re-sign a couple of players. One of them is Fletcher Cox, who still is a star defensive tackle. And I think $12.5 million for one year is a fine deal. And as you can see also, we... <laughs> After the signing, if he accepts it, we would have $110 million in cap room. So that is a lot of money to go spend on some players in the off season. But we also have a few players to take care of ahead of the off season to re-sign. And maybe some we want to go let test. The other player I want to re-sign after Fetcher Cox accepted it is Presley Harvin because he's a great punter and he's gonna be an eagle for four more years. The draft class is strongest at quarterback. There is seven first round quarterbacks. Lucas Jennings is the one quarterback I would select if I had the number one overall pick and needed a quarterback, but there is seven of them and I think you can have your pick. And also a strong position group is, ha is halfback or running back. But there is no way I'm going to select either a quarterback or a running back. And wide receiver is also a position where I thought there's a lot of value. But going through the draft class, I think this receiver class is overrated. Amari Ferguson, he is the top one. Solid to good speed, great to elite strength, great to elite acceleration. He's a top five talent and projection. We're not going to be able to select him, but he has a lot of A's across the board and even injury is an ace so he looks like a star receiver a release a short route running and a couple other catching ratings that are really good but going through the rest of the class i think there's a lot of overdrafting that's going to be done here and yeah because as you can see on the left side it's a projection and on the right side there is the true value and most of them are reaches probably if you select them at the projected point but there is one receiver who goes the other way around and that is justin douglas a potential udfa with good to great speed great to elite excel and as you can see a release and a break tackle so that is an interesting combination of ratings he also has b stiff arm and b spec catch b catch and traffic he looks like a really physical receiver and I think that he's an interesting option in the late round so maybe I'm gonna select him. The top player in the class is called Arnold Gregory. He's a left tackle and look at his athleticism scores. He's gonna be a monster athlete and even his skills. You, you, if you already can see A pass block and B run block you're already gold because this guy's gonna be good. But we're gonna look to the defensive side of the ball because that there that's the spot where we need to address some needs. And one of them is defensive tackle. Yeah, I know this is an end, but he weighs 301. And he has we don't know much about him, but he has good to great speed, good to great strength, and good to great acceleration, and even great to elite agility. And his ratings. Although there is a lot of them who might not be as important, he looks good. Like he has a lot of good uh, ratings already discovered. And then David Manning, he's another defensive tackle I really want to take a bigger look at, better look at. He has A power moves, B finesse moves, and C block shedding. And all the other ratings are really solid as well. His athleticism is great. And there, there is yet another one, Terrell Payne. He is 23, but he is great to elite basically everything, and or at least everything that's important. But his letter grades are not as consistently A's and B's. He has a few C's in there. And Armand Watts is another guy. There is a lot of defensive tackles, and there might be yeah A block shedding and B finesse moves. Look at this guy, man. 
but we also don't know the injury rating. Marcus Chancellor is another one. Block shedding and finesse moves and power moves all in the Bs. He has great athleticism. And yeah, there might be a good chance that I just take the best defensive tackle that's on the board when we are drafting. And yeah, then there is an edge rusher I'm pretty interested in. He has great to elite excel and speed, good to great strength. And his skills. We don't know much about him, but we already know. B finesse moves and B power moves. So he's gonna be a good edge rusher. And he might also be the selection. And then we need a linebacker and there is only one first round linebacker in this draft class. And he, his name is Deacon Chancellor. He has great speed probably and we don't know much else. But he might be one of the focus players in the off season because as you can see, there is not a whole lot else going on at middle linebacker. There's a couple other middle linebackers that I'd be interested in, but projected second to third round. And Chris Reed is already 23 years old. He's a little bit undersized. And if I wanted to select somebody like him, he probably doesn't have great coverage. I'm better off just getting a strong safety and moving him to middle linebacker. But at least he has great to elite speed, so that's something and for skills we about him we don't know much either he has good awareness and play rec i guess so that's not bad to know but the really important ratings we don't know about then rob webster projected third to fourth round he has a zone coverage and he's 21 so that's interesting but he also looks for the massive hit and he has great to elite speed. So this guy might be somebody really interesting if his ratings show up um, when I do the focus scouting on him. But, but all of his letter grades are C's right now except a zone coverage. So I'm not sure if he's going to be a starting linebacker. And well, we're still looking for that second middle linebacker. Another linebacker I liked was Coco Washington out of Maryland. His archetype is pass rush, uh, pass coverage. But if I already see that letter grade F block shedding, it's already basically over. He has great to elite speed though, and really good athleticism for a potential UDFA. But his letter grades are not all that promising, so. I don't know, if we want a top linebacker, we might have to take Deacon Chancellor with the first chance we get. And then Dom Birch, he is a really good athlete. And he's the guy that was um, recommended to us, uh, yeah, scouting him. We don't know much about him because the letter grades are not giving, him much, giving us much information, but he looks to be good. And then there's a bunch of cornerbacks in the first round that might be really good. One of them I like is Taylor Whitfield. He is 21, so that's great. He has B-man coverage and B-press. He had good to great speed. So that is already more than enough for me to know that I like this guy. But he has D-injury, so that is something... Do you really want to draft somebody with D-injury in the first round? You need to be... This needs to be a slam dunk pro bowler. You want to get in the first round and then nicholas foster is another corner also five foot nine so really small both of those guys but he's also 21 he has good the great speed great to elite excel his change of direction is great but we don't know man or zone coverage so maybe another candidate to check out in the focus scouting and then chris matlock is a strong safety that's pretty interesting he has good to great speed which probably means four fives so 88, 89. And the interesting part is he is about 220. And he might be a candidate to move him to linebacker. If that's what I need to do after I don't get Deacon Chancellor or anything. So yeah. For the focus scouting. For the first round, I decided I'm going to go after defensive tackles that I don't know much about. And one of them is Keelan Redmond the edge rusher that is 301 and then Chris Ford is the other one and Alonzo McFadden from Penn State those three guys I want to know more about and I'm gonna show you the results as we go along in this franchise so yeah 
those three defensive tackles I don't know much about about most of the others I already know 90% and some and some something like that so yeah those three guys I only knew 50% about and then yeah there is gonna be yet another tandem breakout for the receivers and Mitch Slaughter is challenged here to yeah get something going and well we're gonna play the Dolphins first they do not have one of the weakest secondaries in the league so maybe that's gonna be a tough day ahead of Mitch Slaughter and Devontae Smith but they generally don't have the greatest defense and yeah if we get 150 and maybe a couple touchdowns this might be a big boost for Mitch Slaughter the Dolphins have a completely renewed offense their defense is not that great but Tua Tagovailoa is developing into a nice starting quarterback and they signed him to a four-year extension after this season worth about 80 million dollars and well that's not a huge cap hit but they apparently are happy with him Marlon Mack they signed him with the great acceleration 91 uh, juke move they signed Odell Beckham Jr. They still have Jalen Waddell and Devontae Parker. So they are working on their offense. And Quincy Zimmerman is yet another guy they drafted in the last offseason. He has excellent athleticism, great catching ratings. Route runnings can get better, I think. 84 release is great. They also drafted Christian Pitts with 87 speed, 83 catching. And yeah, 92 spec catch. He looks like a monstrous tight end. And then they also signed Teron Armstead, one of the best tackles in the league, a top five left tackle. And well, we'll see how this is gonna go. But the rest of their offensive line is a little bit more lower rated. Brian Richardson is another draft pick of theirs from a year back, I think, but he looks solid. And then they drafted Ricardo Lynch, who is a nice edge rusher, power moves at 83 and block shading in the 70s, so that's fine. And then their last first round pick was Tyler Cummings, great cornerback, 90 speed, 75 men, 73 zone. His press is a little low, but you don't have to press to win. And with that, we're gonna go into this game. The Eagles are trying to get to the playoffs. They are close to or hovering around 500. And they have been for most of the season. So let's get into it. The Eagles are going to start off this game. And this stat line looks a lot more like the MVP candidate from last season, Jalen Hurts. On third and six, he gets it away. It's Dallas Goddard, and he fights 12 yards. He gets out of it, and Jalen Hurts is perfect on the day to start on this opening drive. First and 10, Jalen Hurts. He has got some time. There is Doug Washington, and he gets down the field. That's 17 more, and Hurts still perfect on the day, operating the offense. Second and goal. Hand off to Miles Sanders. And he jukes out one guy and still can't get in. That's just two yards. Miles Sanders is at nine rushes on this drive, but they don't get far. And well, just as I say it, it's a rushing touchdown for the Eagles. So they score first. It's seven, nothing. Huge opening drive. Took up eight minutes off clock to get down the field. Probably like 15 play drive. And yeah, here is Tua Tungabailoa. He has also a pretty great stat line to start this season. And there is Marlon Mack with a 15, 17 yard run. That's fun. Third and four coming up now on the Eagles logo. Tua, the lefty, he throws it up down the sideline, but it is incomplete intended for Mack. Thrown out of bounds and they punt the football away to the Eagles rush for Miles Sanders to end the first quarter and he's got a first down here. A couple of plays later 
the Eagles are at third and nine and Jalen Hurts is scrambling outside and he takes off that's a first down and he slides safely so they are moving the football close to field goal range now Hurts hands it off to Miles Sanders who is close to the marker did he get it yes he did that's another first down second and one Hurts, it's a play action bootleg to the left, and he has a man open. It's Mitch Slaughter into the end zone. That's a touchdown. 14-0. Eagles are running away with the game and the lead. And Mitch Slaughter is at 38 of 150, so that does not look too great. Second and seven. Tua throws it on the in route, and that's caught by Jalen Waddle. And that is a first down in Eagles territory now. Tua hands it off to Marlon Mack, and that's about eight yards, but there is an injury, and it is J.J. Watt. And so he's going to come out of the game and walk straight into the locker room. That does not look good. So, yeah, Derek Barnett, you're up. Third and goal. Tua has some time, and he goes down. It's Jonathan Rivera beating Teron Armstead for a sack on third down, and that results in a field goal. So 13-3, by the way, the Eagles missed an extra point on that second touchdown. And now Doug Washington wide open on the corner route. So that is a first down and cornerback blitz. Mitch Slaughter jukes out one guy. That's 14 more. Marching down the field, operating the offense efficiently. Jalen Hurts, it's a bootleg. Actually, it's a play action shot, no bootleg. And there is... Doug Washington down to the two-yard line, first and goal. We're already far inside the two-minute warning. 31 seconds left in the half. Hand off to Miles Sanders into the end zone. Touchdown, Eagles running away with the game. That is going to result in a 20-3 lead. Three-score game. But 24 seconds left for Tua. There is some time to do some damage, and he misses his tight end, Mike Kosicki. Third and nine coming up now. They're just going to run it. Marlon Mack to end the half, and that is going to result in a fourth down. That doesn't matter at all. Of course, if you enjoy the video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. And yeah, this has been a dominant showing by the Eagles. Three score lead and we're gonna look at another game here and this time it's going to be Washington playing in Buffalo and they are behind by a lot they are five and four and they might move on to be five and five just as the Bills are gonna be five and five after this game another interesting game is Dallas playing the Panthers and they got beat so the Cowboys are now th seven and three and they are no longer running away with the division and Casey Madden had a deep touchdown I assume like a 75 yard touchdown stuff like that so yeah we're gonna see Casey Madden in the next game and yeah we're gonna get back to this one Marlon Mack with a great run into Eagles territory second and nine coming up Delayed handoff to Mack, and he's not going anywhere. It's Bradley Middlebrooks in the backfield, along with Mike Middleton with the TFL here. Third and 11, and Tua throws it up into the end zone, and that is incomplete. Knocked away by Avante Maddox. Second and four motion for Devontae Smith. Jalen Hurts has a clean pocket, gets it away. There is Devontae Smith running down the field. Tried to juke out one guy, but still 18 yards as Hertz crosses 200 yards on the day. And that is actually the first reception by Devontae Smith in this game. And Hertz on third and four is hit. And that ends the drive right there. Fourth down, and they're just going to take a field goal and restore the 17-point lead. Marlon Mack breaking a tackle, falling ahead, getting the first down. He's already at 128 in this game. The Dolphins should have used Marlon Mack a lot more in that first half. Third and nine coming up for Tua now. And he has a man kind of open, but I think Mike Middleton would have made the tackle anyway if Tua didn't overthrow this football. They punt it back to the three-yard line as, as Kenneth Gainwell 
gets ahead up the field and has about 12 yards to end this quarter. Fourth quarter action now. Jalen Hurts is going down and he's back at the three yard line. This is Zach Laws. This is bad and it results in a punt with great field position for the Dolphins now. Mike Gesicki breaks one tackle, breaks another tackle and finally brought down after 17 yards. First down, Dolphins and they get to the 48 yard line. And a couple plays later, first and 10 from the 32, Tua has a man open. And this is not Marlon Mack. Down the field, I'm not sure who number 30 is, but there has been an injury for Williams. So there is an offensive lineman walking into the locker room and the Dolphins now have a weaker interior. Second and goal, handoff, and this is a touchdown Dolphins. This is, by the way, Justice Hill, I forgot that they signed him here away from the Ravens in the last offseason. So he has a touchdown and before that he had a great play receiving the ball. And that results in a 10-point game. Miles Sanders has about 7 or 8 on first down. Second and 1, Jalen Hurts. He's just going to take a shot down the field. 1-1, one and one, Mitch Slaughter over a linebacker and he pulls it down. It's a first down at the 3-yard line. What a play by Mitch Slaughter. And there he is at 145. He had a few catches in this game. And now he's got a probably 55, 57 yard pass down that field. And he makes an unbelievable one-hander. What a catch. But it was a mismatch on... A linebacker as Hertz has a play action shot from the goal line and that's a touchdown Mitch Slaughter caps it off and now he is about a two yard three yards away from receiving his 150 receiving goal Jalen Hurts with a nice throw here he's getting back on track so maybe I will look to re-sign him here to a monstrous deal we'll see he is also in the running for the MVP again. So, yeah, there is probably no way around it. We might have to give him the big contract, even though I'm still not all that excited about it. As Odell Beckham Jr. has a nice catch here, getting a first down. And now they move to almost the red zone. Nice throw by Tua Tungo Bailoa here to Devontae Parker. Second and two, Tua. He is in the pocket, and that is a touchdown. So the Dolphins make it a 10-point game again. This is Christian Pitts, the rookie tight end. And he looks like a stud. He looks like a great tight end of the future. And now Miles Sanders running it up the middle. That is going to be a first down. We're already inside the two-minute warning, so this all... Doesn't really matter, I'd say, but Miles Sanders has another 17 yards. And that is going to end the game because they could run out all the time. And yeah, it's a 10-point game. Jalen Hurts played great. And they had a great rushing attack as well. Miles Sanders had a great day. And yeah, 73% completion percentage for Jalen Hurts. 287 and two touchdowns, no picks. Tua played a fine game, but he didn't have the offensive line really to do anything about it. Marlon Mack and Miles Sanders both had great days on the ground. Justice Hill had a few carries there. And Mitch Slaughter finally got the 150 and he had also two touchdowns. I'm sorry. Doug Washington had 69 yards. And yeah, for defense. Yeah, Jerome Baker and Jermaine Pratt were all over the field. And there's just a couple of sacks in this game, but it was still a problem for Tua. He had to throw a lot of footballs away that I did not cut into this game. Because who wants to, th wants to th throw away? So yeah, he just didn't have the time, had to throw the ball away. It just resulted in one sack by this defense and... Yeah, Mitch Slaughter, he had the big day. He hopefully gets some um, ratings. And yeah, plus three catch in traffic and release. So that's great. He really looks like a 
new number two receiver now his route runnings are still lagging behind but i'm trying i really am trying and then we have a another scenario with uh yeah getting a an offensive goal with uh, throwing for three touchdowns in this next game against the cowboys and yeah we have a short week this is going to be the thursday night football game and Brandon Brooks is a bit concerned about how we approach this short week and yeah we're gonna see that how that's gonna go the first ratings are coming back on those three scouting players Keelan Redmond is the first guy up he has B finesse moves we still don't know much about him he has a lot of B's across the board but he has D injury so maybe not him I'm not sure Casey Madden he is the young new star receiver they drafted and yeah 94 speed he's a great route runner already he's a slot receiver through and through they also drafted chris wise and he has 89 acceleration he's a great edge rusher here number 49 84 block shedding also so he's gonna be a yeah a problem against the run and the pass james woods a uh, rookie cornerback they drafted 93 speed his coverages need a little work but yeah and zay bowen he has great zone coverage and great athleticism also great run stopping abilities so yeah he's gonna be flying all over the field probably and yeah this game is gonna be at at&t stadium and the cowboys are seven and three the eagles are six and four yeah i think six and four so yeah this game might be for the division and dak prescott is trying to fire up this offense he still has the great offensive line a star trio of receivers and ezekiel elliott in the backfield but the eagles are gonna start off this game second and ten motion for Devonte smith and hurts has a man open that was Smith, but he misses him, and that results in a punt because they could not convert on third and 10 there. And so Dak Prescott still, yeah, he's on the field, third and nine, and Prescott has a man not open, and that was great coverage by Darius Slay, knocking the football away, getting the offense back onto the field. It's Devontae Smith, and he is behind the defense, behind Kelvin Joseph. This is a touchdown. Eagles starting off this game with a blast here. Jalen Hurts has the man open. Devontae Smith with a great press release getting behind Calvin Joseph. And yeah, there is no way to stop Devontae Smith when he got behind the defense already. Touchdown Eagles, 7-0. Dak Prescott trying to get this game underway now Ezekiel Elliott running it down the sideline now that is 15 for Elliott first and 10 coming up now at the 45 handoff to Elliott and there is oh there is a missed tackle and Elliott has 20 yards on the ground what a play he sh just shoved away Taylor Anderson shrugged him off Second and six, Ezekiel Elliott running it up the middle. Nowhere to go, but there is an injury. And this does not look good. Chaz Surratt lying on the ground, holding that wrist. He is going to exit the game. And he probably won't come back, I'd say. Third and four, Dak Prescott, man wide open in the end zone. It's Casey Madden, their new star receiver. Touchdown Cowboys, they tie up this game and actually Chas Rat has just broken his ribs. So why he why why is he holding the this this wrist doesn't make any sense. But yeah, Doug Washington running away from defenders as we are used to. And there is yet another injury. Lane Johnson, the right tackle, is going to exit the game. He has muscle cramps. He will be back soon, but that means Travis Maynard is gonna be in the game and there is a man open this is mitch slaughter and the ball is complete jalen hurt starting out this game 4 for 9 but 111 in yardage so that's great miles sanders great rushing lane breaking a tackle falling ahead that's 14 yards by the way i wanted to mention that 
Those injuries from the last game didn't result in anything permanent. And there is Mitch Slaughter. That's a great play. 13 yards, breaking a tackle, getting the first down on the run pass option. Second and goal. And this time Lane Johnson is back in the game and it doesn't matter at all. It's the Marcus Lawrence with the sack. And that results in a field goal for the Eagles. Third and 10. Dak Prescott, he is on the money. And that is C.D. Lamb, their other star receiver. Second and six. And Dak is running outside, throwing it complete to Gregory. And that is a first down. That is another slot receiver from them, Dwayne Gregory. Second and goal. And they hand it off. It's Philip Malone. He's into the game in the wake of Ezekiel Elliott. And that's a... Cowboys touchdown halfway through the second quarter they are taking the lead in this one Jalen Hurts is on the bootleg and that is incomplete for Devontae Smith and Jalen Hurts got injured he took a hit on that one so Christian Landry is into the game and he is on the mark on the money for Devontae Smith 12 yards on his first throw in this game pectoral strain for Jalen Hurts, but we're going to go with Landry for the time being. And there's a man open back shoulder. It's Devontae Smith on third and 10. That's a first down. Took a couple deep shots on that set of downs. But yeah, still managed to get the first down on third down. First and 10 for Landry. Now he has Mitch Slaughter. And that's a first down 16 yards. Christian Landry is 3 of 5 for 44 yards. As Jalen Hurts is back into the game. And Mitch, um, Miles Sanders is open over the middle. Hurts is not having the greatest of days. Second and goal, Jalen Hurts. And this time he stays on his feet and he goes down. Chris Wise in the backfield. The rookie edge rusher I talked about. Third and goal, Jalen Hurts is scrambling outside. Demarcus Lawrence was about to collapse the pocket. Hurts on third and goal. He doesn't get in. 33 seconds remaining in this half. And Zay Bowen just made a touchdown save and tackle that led to a field goal instead of a touchdown. Dak Prescott, 22 seconds on the clock. He has Casey Madden. What a play down the sideline. Unbelievable. It's a one-point game. And Dak Prescott, he is scrambling outside the pocket. Throws a crossbody and Taylor Anderson just shoves him away. Breaking the pass up here. Third and 10, Dak Prescott at the 30, 43. And that is complete to Dalton Schultz, but that results in a fourth down and a 55 yard field goal try. That is not even close. What is happening? Two seconds left on the clock and Hurts is just gonna take a deep shot from great field position. And there is Devontae Smith. He's behind the defense. He breaks the tackle. That is a touchdown sliding into the end zone. What a play by Devontae Smith. And the Eagles are taking the lead here with zero seconds on the clock. They're just going to take the extra point here, if I remember correctly. So that's a six-point lead for the Eagles. Calvin Joseph is getting torched here by one of the best receivers in the game. And yeah, they are taking the lead after the Cowboys missed the field goal. They had a chance to go up 17-13, but Devontae Smith put them on the board again. It's 2014. And yeah, it's Thursday night, so no games are on the league that are all that or even started, but all that interesting either. So uh, we're just going to move on to the third quarter as Dak Prescott is going to take the field again. And he has a man open on the comeback. It's C.D. Lamb. And Prescott needs to throw it down the field here. They can beat that secondary up. And Dak Prescott has another open man. And that is Dalton Schultz again. But there is another injury. Milton Williams at defensive tackle. And he is going to exit to the locker room. So he is probably not going to come back in this game either. First and goal. Philip Malone in the backfield. Going absolutely nowhere. Look at the play by J.J. Watt. As he came back. But yeah, Milton Williams is not going to come back in this game. Fourth and goal. And they're going with the fake. 
and there's a broken tackle. It's a touchdown for the Cowboys. It's Blair Callaway, the backup QB, running it in. What a call on fourth down. Unbelievable. They take the lead back. It's a one-point game still. And now on third and seven, there is a flag on the play. But since the ball fell incomplete, that is not going to matter at all. Lane Johnson with the holding. First and 10 goal line offense for some reason. But it's a play action shot for Prescott. He has a man open. Yet another man. It's Amari Cooper who has been really quiet in this game. Locked down by Darius Slay. And Philip Malone breaking tackles here and there and left and right. That's 12 yards to him. He is in the game for Ezekiel Elliott. But this time it's somebody else. And that is a touchdown for the Cowboys. They just run it in with their third string running back. Whose name I don't even know. I'm sorry. But yeah, eight point game now. Jalen Hurts, you need to get down the field. Last play before the fourth quarter and Doug Washington breaks a tackle. Hertz is having kind of a rough day but yeah he crossed 200 yards on that play. Blitz is coming in and nowhere to go. He just got rid of it. Dallas Goddard would have maybe scored on that play. Fourth and one. Miles Sanders nowhere to go. It's Leighton Van Der Esch and the Cowboys take over on fourth and one. And that hurts a lot. Cowboys offense back out onto the field. There is an interception. Dante Jackson jumps up and he's going to run this all the way back. No, he fumbled it away. What a play by Dak Prescott forcing the fumble uh, probably one inch away from the goal line. Unbelievable stuff happening here. So first up, Dak Prescott throws a pretty bad pick and Dante Jackson Shows off the jumping skills, but then he tracks him down, forces the fumble, and they recover it in the end zone. That was a missed chance. That really was a missed chance. KS Casey Madden has another catch here, but this is fourth and inches. Tyler Stokes with the tackle here. So no damage done, but some time off the clock. Jalen Hurts has a man open. This is James Washington, and he has 18 yards on this catch. Hurts now 11 of 20 for about 220 yards. First and 10, Hurts. He has a clean pocket. There is someone wide open. It's Doug Washington into field goal range. And now he's at 267. So this game is maybe turning around again. As Sean Keaton is now injured. And Travis Maynard once again is in the game. He is in for the other tackle that has been injured in this game and there is Devontae Smith into the end zone touchdown it's a two-point game pending a two-point conversion try by the Eagles Devontae Smith having another catch here and they are gonna hand it off toss it out to Miles Sanders spinning away from tackles and the two-point try is good game is tied at 28 with three minutes and 16 seconds remaining this game is going down to the wire. Second and three. Motion for Dalton Schultz. Philip Malone is the lone back. Second and three. And this is going to be a throw to the outside. To, was that Gregory again? I'm not sure. Third and two now for Prescott. You've got to get this one. We're inside the two-minute warning now. And he just takes off, gets the first down, slides ahead of a cornerback first and 10 Dak Prescott it's a play action shot he has some time and he's going down he should not have stepped up in the direction of Fletcher Cox second and 14 Prescott another bootleg shot this time he scrambles to his right throws cross body and it is broken up by Darius Slay what a game by him shutting down Amari Cooper third and 14 Dak Prescott dumps it off to Malone and he gets the first down just barely. He gets the 14 yards on the dot. It's first down and 30 seconds left in this game. Second and seven handing it off to Philip Malone. And now the Eagles have to start taking timeouts. 
Goal line offense. Philip Malone gets the football, runs it up the middle on third and five, and there is nowhere to go. It's fourth down, and the Cowboys are going to take a field goal here. And, yeah, they have about, yeah, six seconds left. Second and 15 for Jalen Hurts. And down the field, somebody's behind the defense, and he overthrows Smith, and he would have had another score probably... Kelvin Joseph beaten again and Jalen Hurts overthrows him. Well, what do you do? Game over. Cowboys win. They might be running away with the division at this point. Now the Cowboys are 8 and 3, the Eagles 6 and 5. That's two game difference. And yeah, the Eagles have to win the second game if they want to have a chance at winning the division because if the Cowboys take that one again that's basically a four four game lead and we're not at the beginning of the season so yeah I think Hurts made a few mistakes Landry played okay in his in his absence and yeah rushing Philip Malone he was grinding out those yards Devontae Smith ridiculous day 169 and three touchdowns and he could have had about 70 more and a fourth touchdown if uh, Hurts didn't overthrow him. Casey Madden, he got injured at the end in the, on the last drive. And then Doug Washington, who is kind of a copy of him, if I think about it now. He had a great day as well. And yeah, Kayvon Wallace flying all over the field. Fletcher Cox had a sack. Demarcus Lawrence had a sack. Chris Wise and Neville Gallimore split on one. And then Dante Jackson with a ridiculous interception. Yeah, it should, have, it should have just ran it in and not done the celebration run-in stuff. So, yeah, that probably cost us the game, but... Yeah, shit happens. Mish Slaughter, he is happy that we did three the throw the three touchdown passes. So, yeah, the quarterbacks are going to have a boost to their accuracies in the next three games. And yeah, Chasserat not coming back for four games. That is, if I remember correctly, almost the rest of the season. So what are we going to do at sub linebacker now? But it's good to hear that all the other uh, injuries didn't amount to anything big. And yeah, Devontae Smith, a ridiculous stat line there. Getting NFC Offensive Player of the Week. Another update, the second player I marked on that scouting thing, and he looks ridiculous. Chris Ford, great to elite speed, great to elite strength, and let's look at the skills. The three most important skills, B power moves, B block shedding, and A finesse moves. He might be the pick. He looks ridiculously good. And yeah, um, for the playoffs, it doesn't look great for the Eagles. We're not even on the seventh seed. NFC is competitive this season, and the Washington football team actually occupies the sixth seed. The Cowboys are the two seed right now, and the Vikings might be running away with the NFC in general. They are having a monstrous season. It is absolutely ridiculous. And yeah, that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe for more Eagles franchise. See you in the next episode. Until then, spread some love.